Sponge Bob Square Pants Sponge Bob Square Pants Sponge Bob's Big Birthday Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I am here to review the SpongeBob SquarePants 20th Anniversary Special SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. So SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout is written by Kaz and Mr. Lawrence, Plankton himself, the two writers that have been writing for the show for a very long time now. So SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout is about when the gang wants to throw SpongeBob his surprise birthday party. And so while Sandy and everyone else is busy planning the surprise birthday party, Patrick and Spongebob go up to the surface land. You all know that this is my favorite cartoon. This is something I've been so, so excited to see. This was easily my most anticipated special. Like anything TV related, this was my most anticipated bar none. Because obviously, I have loved this show my whole life. It is crazy that we have made it this far into the show. And what makes this even cooler, honestly, is the fact that this special actually premiered the day before my birthday, and not just my birthday, but even Tom Kenny, SpongeBob himself's birthday, since we happen to share the same birthday, which is cool. And so because of that, I waited until it literally hit midnight my birthday to watch this special and so now that i have seen the special i have to say that i can indeed say that i am very satisfied with what i got i really enjoyed spongebob's big birthday blowout it's a very worthy hour-long special and how it compares to the other ones i'll get to that later but i could definitely say for now that yeah, I really dug this for sure. And I just have to say what I really enjoyed about the special are obviously the nods to not just the show, but even the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which I have right here actually. It even has nods to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which I thought was actually really, really cool. And something that definitely surprised me was that if you look closely in one part of the special, you actually see Mindy from the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, which is very cool because she's never made an appearance in the show before. So to see Mindy, you know, appear as that little Easter egg, that was really cool to see. You obviously have David Hasselhoff in a couple of moments of the special, which was really satisfying to me. So that was a nice little cherry on top right there. But yeah, as for the show, if you really pay, pay close attention to the Easter eggs, there's so many callbacks to like, even uh, if you don't really watch SpongeBob anymore, you could even pick up on like some of the characters you see in the past. like. We see that eel from the SpongeBob episode, Walking Small. We see the Strangler from SpongeBob Meets the Strangler. We see that Oopla fish from the Krusty Krab training video. There's so many cool Easter eggs, callbacks in this episode. I mean, SpongeBob, in the last few years, I'm gonna say since probably 2015, they've been doing a lot of nods and callbacks to previous episodes, uh, old episodes especially. And I really love that the show has been doing that for these past few years. But the fact that this hour long special really goes all out to really do these Easter eggs is really cool. And obviously you get a nice tribute to Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. And um, by the way, 
You know, recently, Tim Conway, who voiced Barnacle Boy, recently passed away. So I just want to say very quick, rest in peace to Tim Conway. He will be very missed, but at least he is reunited with his buddy, Ernest Borgnine, Mermaid Man. So that was really nice. And if you even look at that moment where, you know, we see the Mermaid Man Barnacle Boy toys on top of the cake, it's not just a tribute to them, but if you look at that entire table in that one shot, it's really a callback to the episode Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 5. Also, uh, it was just really cool, aside from the Easter egg, just to see these characters come together. Like, it was cool to see SpongeBob's parents because I don't think we've seen SpongeBob's parents in quite a while. So, you know, it was cool to see them again. And just seeing the gang plan this party for SpongeBob, I thought it was really nice. Obviously, Sandy making sure that no one is particularly celebrated until SpongeBob comes back. I thought that was really funny. And I don't know why, I feel like in some way, when Sandy was telling some of the fishes, don't eat this, don't eat that, I don't know why. I feel like in some way it was a callback to even party pooper pants. I don't know if that was the intention from the writers right there. But in that moment, I was actually reminded of party pooper pants. And that's more of the B storyline of the special. But anytime the special did cut to them, I did really genuinely enjoy it. Especially when we get towards the end of the special and... They've celebrated so hard without Spongebob that Spongebob's entire pineapple collapsed. I thought that was funny right there. And that's the thing I'll say too, the humor for the most part really did work for me. There were so many points where I was laughing a lot. One of the moments was actually towards the end of the hour long special when Patrick falls in love with this fish. I thought that was very funny right there. It was one of the hardest times I was actually laughing at the special, just those few times when Patrick was looking at that fish and giving it the kissy marks. I thought that was really funny too. There's a couple of scenes dealing with a dog and I thought those couple of moments were very funny too, especially the second one when SpongeBob and Patrick think it's a flying pie. You know, it's a Frisbee, but they think it's like this flying pie. Obviously, it's not the first time SpongeBob and the gang have gone to surface level, but here in the special in particular, Particular, how they blend the live action moments with the animation when we see Spongebob, Patrick, and everyone else inside that driving tank. It blended so well. It never felt out of place to me with how, you know, the traditional animated stuff blended in with the more live action stuff. It all seemed very, um, I guess, smooth, natural. There you go. I think natural is the way I described it. It all just seemed natural with the animation and the live action stuff. I felt like there were a lot of really cool creative things that they did with it. Like when you see the dog drinking, you know, the water from the fish tank, that looked really natural too. That never felt out of place. You actually believe this dog was drinking from this tank. Just stuff like that really didn't impress me and I have to just commend that. And then, you know, since I say how it blends with the live action stuff, just seeing SpongeBob and Patrick experiencing the surface land, that was honestly wonderful to see. And I even enjoyed the fish that was driving around SpongeBob, Patrick, and the other fishes up in the surface level. I thought he was a very enjoyable character, really enjoyed his personality and how excited he was just to show everyone what the surface land was like. And as far as the stuff with Patchy and Potty, I really did enjoy whenever we saw those characters. I'll bring up a specific moment with Patchy later on, obviously, and I think you all know what moment I'm about to bring up um, later on, but anytime we did cut to Patchy and Potty, I did really enjoy those moments too. Obviously, it's always nice to see those characters, and Tom Kenny always does a really great job as Patchy the Pirate. And that's where I really do have to give a lot of credit to Kaz and Mr. Lawrence, the writers of this entire special. Because, like I said earlier, they have been writing episodes for Spongebob for a very long time. And you can tell that 
these writers they really wanted to honor not just the legacy of the show but the legacy of Steven Hillenburg because Steven Hillenburg did sadly pass away last year but yeah I do feel like this is even a nice love letter to Steven Hillenburg and I feel like Steven Hillenburg is smiling from up in heaven honestly because I do think the special turned out as well as I'm sure they hope they would you could tell there was a lot of passion behind the special just from these two writers I feel like they were definitely the right writers to write something like this and yeah I have to give them a lot of credit they did a very good job writing this special and I, I appreciate the love that they've had for it you do feel the love and that passion he would be very very proud and I think the writers themselves and everyone involved in Spongebob I feel like in general should just be proud of what they've accomplished. And as far as the ending goes, I really enjoyed where they ended this special. I thought it was very sweet. It made me smile. It was just overall a very cute, nice ending that made me satisfied as a longtime SpongeBob fan because SpongeBob does get his birthday song. The birthday song at the end was very nice because throughout the special, uh, SpongeBob is trying to get his birthday song, but every time he's about to get a song, something wrong just happens that interrupts that. But we get at the end of the special and I thought it was very nice. I did like it when everyone just sang the song for him and as well as the celebrities that we see saying happy birthday Spongebob. Like you get a lot of celebrity appearances at the end saying happy birthday Spongebob. Like John Goodman, Tiffany Haddish, Jason Sudeikis, to even Gilbert Gottfried, which I'm not gonna lie, I laughed when I saw Gilbert Gottfried. I don't know why, there's just something about Gilbert Gottfried saying happy birthday Spongebob, but it, it did make me laugh. It was also a very nice ending to me because Patchy, the whole thing with Patchy for all these years is that he's always wanted to meet Spongebob. Like it's his lifelong dream to meet Spongebob. And it happened. He finally got to meet Spongebob after all these years. And I'm not gonna lie, when Spongebob and Patchy, they met each other, I was so happy. I even kind of almost shed a happy tear. I was even kind of close to shedding a happy tear because it's like, it finally happened. Now, where they decide to take Patchy the Pirate after the special, obviously, we don't know at the moment. You know, we'll see how that goes for him in the future, but I do think this was the perfect time for Patchy and Spongebob to meet each other. I think this moment feels earned. I don't think there's any better time to have this moment than to have it happen in the 20th anniversary special. And of course, as we get to the end of the episode, we do see at the very end, thank you, Steve Hillenburg. It was a nice little moment. I thought it was a nice little way to end off this entire special. Made me happy seeing that and yeah. Now I know you're all gonna ask me, is this the best TV movie ever or special? And I will say that no, I don't think it's the best TV special or movie ever, but I did still dig it. I can't deny though that I did have certain issues with this special though. And one of my issues is that, yeah, the humor doesn't always work for me. Uh, it does feel really forced in some moments, like that moment when Patrick goes to SpongeBob's door to distract him that he and the gang are gonna throw a big surprise birthday party for him, but he forgot really immediately what to do. But when Patrick is just doing the uh, and then you see these weird like back and forth facial expressions from him and SpongeBob, that didn't work for me. It felt unnecessary too. And I know SpongeBob is all about having exaggerated expressions and I don't mind that for the most part, but that's one of those moments where I'm sitting there going, what was the point of that gag? And there are sometimes other gags where I'm just like, okay, what's the point of that or that? But I will say for the most part, I was laughing, but there were moments like that that didn't work for me. Another moment that didn't really work for me to be honest 
was when we see Kel Mitchell, you know, from Keenan and Kel and all that, which by the way, that just got rebooted very, very recently. Cool to see him, by the way. Don't get me wrong. It was cool to see Kel Mitchell in this. And it was cool to see even Jack Griffo, who used to be in the Thundermans, in this too. But that scene with the bean and all that didn't really work for me. It honestly felt really flat for me. The only time it worked for me, honestly, that scene was when Patrick really wanted to go for the beans like really, really badly and he drives off with it with his crazy facial expressions. That did actually make me laugh. But aside from that, that whole sequence with the bean, I'm not gonna lie, it didn't really work for me. And something else, I'm not gonna lie, I'm bummed saying this is one of my flaws with the special. It's when SpongeBob and Patrick see the voice actors making their live action appearance. Um, I was looking forward to this because I love the idea of the voice actors actually getting to have live action screen times. Um, I know cartoons, they don't normally do this uh, most of the time, but I was up for this idea. And I still think the idea itself is great, especially if you're celebrating 20 years of an animated show. But seeing how that scene played out, it really did come off as forced to me. I wish the voice actors to be honest, and I know they use their cartoon voices for this show so it can showcase, oh, this voice actor is this character, this voice actor is this character. I think it would have just worked if they used their regular voices. The only time I think it worked in live action form was maybe Mr. Lawrence and maybe even Roger Bumpass to some extent, but everyone else felt very out of place, especially Clancy Brown. And Clancy Brown to me probably feels the most out of place because I've seen this actor in a lot of movies. I know what his real voice actually sounds like, you know, when I see him in stuff like The Shawshank Redemption. So to see him especially use his Mr. Krabs voice, that honestly didn't really work for me. And even when the surface land, when they try to get like really, really cartoony, it does kind of feel a little over exaggerated. And I know that's supposed to be that way, but I do think in the surface land, the cartooniness didn't always work for me personally. And as much as I do really enjoy the ending of this special, it did feel a little rushed to me, just because I know they're on a certain time Time limit it's time for them to wrap it up and it's weird because this is still an hour-long special but even with this being an hour-long special it did um, it did still feel kind of rushed even then like towards the end like you could tell okay this is our time limit here we go with it but regardless I still do really enjoy the ending and even with those flaws that I mentioned I can't help but still feel satisfied by this special overall Overall, I am very happy with how Spongebob's big birthday blowout turned out. I think this is everything that I could ever ask for as someone that has been watching Spongebob for the longest time. I think this is a very, very worthy 20th anniversary special. It's very funny. Whenever we cut back to Sandy and everyone else planning the surprise birthday party for Spongebob, it's a ton of fun. When we cut back to Spongebob and Patrick up on the surface land, it was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that. The Patchy and Potty stuff is always very entertaining to me. And I feel like this 20th anniversary special does such a nice job of honoring Stephen Hillenburg and the legacy of the show. The fact that we've hit 20 years now for the show is truly remarkable and I couldn't be prouder. Thank you to everyone involved with the show. And as far as how it compares to the other hour-long specials, I will probably say, yeah, this is the best one. Because Atlantis Square Pantis, I don't hate that one, but I was disappointed and underwhelmed by that one. I'm very indifferent towards that one. And Truth or Square, I would say um, the rating I'm about to give this special, it's the same rating I gave Truth or Square, not when I reviewed it. When I reviewed Truth or Square um, back in my earlier days of this channel, I believe I gave it a 9 out of 10. But it's about the same rating you're going to see me give this special, but I would say I prefer this one slightly more than Truth or Square, however. I think I've said everything I needed to say. I don't think I've really forgotten anything else. 
I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to give SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout a 7 out of 10. So everyone, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Spongebob's big birthday blowout. And I just want to say that back in May when the show did hit 20, I did do a 20th anniversary special showing all the Spongebob related stuff that I have. I, I forgot to show a couple of things by the way. There's this one right here. Forgot to show this in the video. And I forgot to show this. It's an, it's an activity pad. And I want to thank everyone for the support of that video. Um, seeing how much support I've gotten truly did mean a lot. And if you haven't gotten to watch it yet, I will leave a link in the description down below. And I'm pretty sure you'll see it at the end as well. Very sorry about that, my camcorder cut me off there, but as I was trying to say, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power! Happy birthday, Spongebob. Happy, happy birthday.